I know that you, you joined in, in a Disney Studio in 1953 and, and you started as a mailman when you were 18 and you've been through many ups and downs with Disney. I don't know whether you feel that, that with, with something like this, it's another day at the office or whether every kind of new project is, is, is something special to you still. Oh, absolutely. Every new project's uh, special. Uh, we, uh, uh, it's all new challenges, you know. I was thinking that in many ways this movie goes very much back to those original 1960s and, and 74 featurettes that made up the first feature, you know, the Honey Tree and, and Tigger 2 and, and, and the, the Blustery Day. I mean, was there a sense within, within Disney that this is really a sequel to those movies as opposed to, you know, there's a, a series of, of features that went in between that weren't quite in the same tradition? It, now you're talking about the Winnie the Pooh, the original Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, this particular movie and then the original Disney movies are very similar in style. That the, the book is is used in the animation and right. It seems like a continuation of those particular. Well, uh, there were there, were, there were, as you know, there there were three uh, Pooh shorts. Yes. Yeah. And originally, it was going to be a, going to be made as a feature, and uh, we were about like um, this was in '64, and we were about two thirds of the way through it in pencil tests. And Walt wanted to find out uh, how it looked as a piece of continuity. So he sat in the back of the theater there, and we all were sitting in there and watched the movie. And he said, afterwards, he said, guys, he says, I think we need to cut our losses because I don't think the public's going to like this kind of humor. It's too slow and too mild, you know. And so he said, let's, cut, let's put it out as a featurette. And so that first one came out, which was... Uh, uh, the honey tree, and then it did very, very well. And so he said, "Well, we have the extra footage. Let's put out the honey, the uh, blustery day, which won the Academy Award that year." And then we finally decided, Walt had passed away, that hey, well, why don't we do the third one and then put it together as a feature, which we did then with Winnie the Pooh and Tigger Two, and. Uh, so that we did a shot a live action opening and put it together as a package and the, as the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. It's said now that that Pooh generates as much income as Mickey and Minnie and Donald and Goofy and Pluto combined, that he's a huge, huge success for Disney. Was, was that obvious early on or did it take those featurettes to bring no. that home to you that this was actually a, a big, big hit with audiences? No, you know, it wasn't. Er, it didn't happen early on. It, what, it hap what happened is after the... Um, Blustery Day was released, and it won the Academy Award. Well, Sears and Roebuck made uh, Pooh uh, their uh, Christmas catalog, uh, the theme of the catalog, and that just those catalogs you couldn't you couldn't uh, uh, find anywhere. Everybody was buying the catalogs because of the Pooh stuff in it, and all all of a sudden our merchandise went over the hill. I mean, it was it was huge. And, and for you, being head of story here, going back to, to some of Milne's original stories in, in, in his books, and, and also that the style of the animation is closer to those 1960s and, and 1974 kind of outings, was that quite restricting, or was it actually quite a joy to, to recreate what is, in many people's eyes, the original kind of poo, poo idea of what they, what they see on screen? I think we wanted to hold on to that that the way we had established it early on, where the watercolor look of the of the backgrounds and uh, the uh, uh, the way it was done. We, we tried to carry it through purposely, the, the same style. So, yeah, it was, it was a concerted effort. And would you feel, given that this is a, a multi-billion dollar bear in many ways to, to Disney and to the world, he's such an iconic figure, would you feel the pressure of realising you're continuing on a sort of story that, that's going to be around for, for decades and decades to come and has already been around for... You know, you're talking about a century almost in, in some respects for, for a, a lot of people. Uh, do you, would you ever think, would you stop and think about that and think this is actually quite a, you know, a lot of expectation on, on, on what we're doing here? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we'd love to do more of them. I mean, we, we seriously, we had more fun making this movie, I think, than uh, some of the ones in the past. I mean, this was a real fun project for everybody. I know that I mentioned earlier on that you joined in 1953, you were a mailman for six months, and then you started to work as an in-betweener on Lady and the Tramp, and you've been part of Disney's history for, for a very, very long time. It'll be 50 years soon. Do you feel that there's a new dawn right now with John Lasseter coming in in 2006? There's definitely be an upsurge in, in, in sort of the, the, the sense of, of a Disney, when a, an animated movie comes out again, it's a sense of occasion, and certain outings like Enchanted and Bolt and, 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 and most recently Tangled have certainly been, been a huge success. I, I'm yeah. guessing it feels like a new dawn again. It does. Yeah. It, yeah, it does. I think we're starting to get getting our legs back again. 
and uh, and John's been a big help in that, in that regard. And and his 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 part of his love for Disney, having himself started out in Disney with Tim Burton and Brad Bird, just as a, a kind of a young animator in in the late seventies, he's he's sort of always believed in in the great Disney traditions and hand drawn as part of that. Given that he is the head of Pixar, it it seems at, at, for a while there the hand drawn versus computer animation was an issue but now it doesn't see i think it's it's sort of settled now it seems to be that they all yeah. work that they're all got their place and they've all got their uh you know pluses and, and how they work for audiences um. it, exactly i i don't think it's really the uh the the, the uh, messenger it's the message the, the the story you're telling people respond to the story i don't think they, they re really respond to how it, how it's done if, if the story's good and very quickly, do you have any favourites? Because I know Lady and the Tramp was your first movie that you worked on. You've been Jungle Book, Rescuers, you directed Basil, you directed Christmas Carol. Right. I don't know whether there's certain movies that just do it for you, that, that your favourites, or whether it's hard to pick from such a, a huge amount of movies that well, you've worked on. Well, one of the, the ones that I directed or, or involved, uh, control, be, being able to control, I think I always liked those a little bit better. But uh, uh, actually Beauty and the Beast was one of the, my favourites, and uh, I, I worked on that as story. And uh, I really had fun, fun on that. Um, and of course, Pooh. I mean, every time you get a new new challenge, it it, it all of a sudden has its own own unique things that make it fun again. You know, so it keeps you young. This business, it really does. Good man. Keep up the good work, then. <laughs> <laughs>